Hello everyone and welcome to a video long overdue, uh, but I've uh, been really under the weather lately and I couldn't record, my voice uh, wasn't working, uh, but as some of you have already started wondering if I'm alive, I decided to throw in <laughs> a video, even though I, I was planning on relaxing for a few more days, uh, but uh, I did not finish um, uh, the saga of the finals of the Speed Chess Championship between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura, uh, and it was... Um, it was one of the most thrilling matches I have ever seen and if you guys haven't seen it do check out the original footage on chess.com it's some three hours uh, but you will enjoy every uh, every second of it because uh, the it's um, the same as every match in the speech chess championship uh, first uh, an hour and a half of um, uh, five plus one then 60 minutes of three plus one and then uh, 30 minutes of one plus one the uh, the, the slowish bullet and uh, these are the, the the scores of every time uh, format uh, so in uh, five plus one Hikaru beat Magnus with an incredible result of six and a half to two and a half then Magnus retaliated in the three plus one uh, but only with a result of six to four and then in the one plus one segment Magnus Magnus won with a result of five to four, but it was uh, uh, it was so intense. Uh, so so Hikaru had a four four point margin uh, going into three plus one. Then Magnus lowered it to two, and then in the bullet section, Magnus equalized at some point. But then Hikaru won two games. Magnus won another one, and then uh, this was uh, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, interestingly, Magnus switched shirts after he lost so badly in the five plus one section. So he switched shirts for the three plus one section. Uh, thought that maybe it would bring him uh, more luck and it did but uh, uh, yeah this is the position uh, here uh, of the final game they played so if if Magnus manages to win this one and he is up a queen for the moment even though his queen is hanging but even after this check you uh, Hikaru is getting checkmated in a few moves uh, but the entire match can only last up to three hours and uh, that clock ran out before Magnus could finish checkmating Hikaru even though he still had time on his clock for the actual game but those are the uh, the the rules of the event and okay some of you have been saying that Hikaru's been using uh, bleeding uh, way too much at some point Hikaru uh, had a lost position and then he had two minutes on the clock and then he just allowed the two minutes to run out but that's all uh, within the rules you, you can use those tactics uh, uh, to, to gain the upper hand and as Hikaru said uh, he feels like he will have to use every possible advantage to win against Magnus Carlsen uh, but yeah Hika Hikaru won the match with a one point margin it was absolutely incredible uh do watch the entire thing if you don't watch the entire three hours uh you will not be able to fully appreciate this match as i will only show you one game from the five plus one section uh it's the one that i thought was um uh, the, the 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 most enjoyable uh so let's dive straight into it so hikaru with the white pieces opens with d4 we have knight to f6 knight to f3 and now pawn to g6 we have c4 and now bishop to g7 uh, Magnus goes for the King's Indian defense, uh, one of the uh, one of the openings that Hikaru is very well known for. So knight to c3, we have castles, uh, e4 and d6. So very standard stuff here, nothing out of the uh, ordinary bishop to d3. Bishop to e2 is much more played here, so Hikaru looking to mix it up here. Uh, bishop d3, knight b to d7, h3, and now uh, here uh, e5 is known, c5 is known, a6 is known, but a5 is unknown. So already as of move 7, we have a complete new game aimed at stopping that ad uh, white's advantage uh, expansion on the queen side you know that uh, in the king's indian defense black wants to expand on the king's side attack the white king white will counter by advancing his pawns on the queen side so this is aimed uh, directly at stopping that uh, bishop to g5 hikaru continues development h6 now we have bishop to e3 and now magnus strikes in the center pawn to e5 and now d5 now it's very interesting here if hikaru goes queen to d2 what is happening it's a very complicated line and that's why I think Hikaru avoided it even though it should be very good for white. Let's say he captures knight captures and now you play rook to e8. You allow the h pawn to be captured but if bishop captures on h6 and bishop captures queen captures there's knight to c5 and now the, the pawn on e4 is attacked three times and also the bishop on d3 is hanging so black would have very very nasty counterplay here so that's why Hikaru goes for the standard stuff he uh, advances the pawn in the center pawn to d5 knight to c5 and now bishop to c2 we have knight to h5 and g3 and you will see how this g3 move will come in handy 
uh, very, very, very quickly. Another question is, and always this is the question, can black execute f5? And here it would be a bit premature. I will just show it um, just to give you an example of what's happening. Let's say e captures, bishop captures. Now we're going to play knight to h4. Put pressure on the bishop and the g6 pawn. And after bishop captures, queen captures, g5, you will win this beautiful f5 square for your knight. That's, of course, if black plays this um, to absolute perfection, which is not the case more often than not. But why? It would be okay even if black did now let's say queen d7 you attack the knight g4 and if knight to f4 you can simply play bishop captures on c5 d captures and castles queen side and white would have this incredible position with a monster knight on f5 and uh, black never having the option of uh, playing b5 because white just controls the square too much so that's what you would get. So that's why Magnus continues development. Bishop to d7, queen to d2, and now king to h7. We have castles by Hikaru, and now pawn to a4. With ideas of a3, king to b1 by Hikaru, and now Magnus goes for queen to f6. He puts pressure on the f3 knight, even though a3 is definitely a viable option. For example, a3, b3, knight a6. You're going to shift the knight over to b4, and black will have very... Uh, nice pressure but okay after king to b1 we have queen to f6 going after the knight and the mag uh, hikaru defends it we have queen back to e7 and now knight to h4 by hikaru and here magnus played rook f to b8 getting ready to bust open the position on the queen side uh, the problem is the position is now completely winning for hikaru but it is up to you to figure out how he can do that so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for hikaru while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, offer, uh, amazing night offering. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is night to F5. Absolutely incredible. And uh, if you let the engine crunch the numbers here, just, I mean, it's a blitz game. Of course, you can't possibly calculate everything. Uh, but even if you allow the engine to crunch the numbers, like let's say to depth 45, uh, the engine will say, okay, grab the knight, but it's still bad for black because this is just a, an amazing position. For example, Gcap captures queen captures on h5 you can never play f4 that's why the g3 move comes in handy uh, and uh, if black starts attacking on the queen side which is black's only option uh, then you're just going to capture and okay now you've prepared the the advancement so you can start capturing let's say captures captures queen captures on f5 with check and after king g8 look at this bishop d3 uh, forces the rook away from the fifth rank rook b7 and now you're going to capture the knight captures captures and rook d2 and you never have to worry about a thing a3 is now met with b3 and once you put the bishop on c4 there is nothing black can do to uh, to break through uh, on the on the queen side once this bishop comes to c4 that's just it uh, th there's no attack happening and white is just much much better on the king side everything is coming forward so that's why after knight f5 magnus tried queen to e8 but this also uh, allows hikaru a very nice knight captures and g7 knight captures and just strikes with f4 we have b5 magnus starts counter-attacking on the queen side now bishop captures on c5 uh, d captures and d6 hikaru frees up the d5 square for for uh, his knight c captures on d6 and knight to d5 so he gives up a little bit of material uh, leaves his king vulnerable vulnerable a little bit but he gets a um, uh, very very nice counterplay now knight f6 is a huge threat and magnus plays queen to d8 the best way to parry knight f6 is knight to h5 uh, point being that if you play g4 then knight captures on f4 attacks the queen and the knight so you don't have to worry about that uh, and if you don't do this if you do something like queen f3 you guard the g3 pawn then bishop to c6 attacks the knight and now even some nasty ideas like queen captures on h5 followed by knight f6 check can be met with the very tricky bishop captures on d5 and black is just better uh, but magnus didn't find knight to h5 he played queen to d8 and now we have f captures on e5 knight to e8 now guarding the f6 square and e captures on d6 we have b captures on c4 opening up the b file for his rooks queen captures on c4 and now bishop to e6 and here uh with e5 hikaru's position is just uh, a, a dream position but instead he goes queen captures on c5 and now uh magnus plays knight captures on d6 but still if magnus found rook to a5 uh, this would be 
uh, still a very, very, very tough game for, for both of them. For example, queen to c3. Now you double up rooks for free here. You're attacking the b2 pawn. And if b4, let's say a captures, bishop captures, uh, now you can play bishop captures on d5. And after rook captures, only then knight captures on d6. That's how you win that pawn. But of course, impossible to find in blitz. Uh, knight captures on d6 was played right away. And now it's Hikaru to take... Uh, uh, everything for himself. He plays e5, uh, which isn't the, the most precise way, uh, but uh, it's blitz. If, if you're interested, rook h to f1, uh, incredibly difficult move to spot, but uh, you will realize why uh, in a second. It covers the f6 square. And now look at this. If you attempt a rook to a5 now, which is basically black's only counterplay, now you have queen captures on d6. And after queen captures, knight f6 check. And after king g7, rook captures on d6 with your knight on f6 being defended. That's why rook uh, uh, h to f1 is so strong. Uh, but of course, who who spots this? He he goes pawn to e5, attacks the knight. And now Magnus plays rook to b5, attacks he, he, Hikaru's queen. And now we have knight to f6 with check. Uh, king g7, uh, Hikaru played e5 with the same idea, he wants the f6 square protected, but rook to f1 was a bit more forcing, queen captures on d6, uh, and here again he gives Magnus the, uh, a way back into the game, the way you play this is not capturing the knight, but capturing the rook, and now the end game will be winning, rook captures on d8, rook captures, and now bishop captures on a4, uh, two connected pass pawns on the queen side, absolutely crushing for Hikaru, uh, but after king g7, he played queen captures on d6, and now he allows allows Magnus back into the game, but only if Magnus finds queen to c8. And uh, okay, Hikaru is up material, but Magnus is uh, uh, attacking and uh, the white king also isn't feeling all that safe. But after queen captures on d6, we have rook captures on d6 and now rook a to b8. Now it's a bit different because Hikaru just plays rook captures on e6. He gives back a little bit of material, uh, but he's still gonna have a bishop and knight for a rook. We have rook captures on b2 check, king to c1 and f captures on e6 and here just rook to d1 and he was in this position on move 34 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, rook to d7 is coming and there is just no good way to parry this. See, if you play something like rook to b7 then just bishop e4 and you can't defend both the rook and the d7 square so you have to defend the rook and then comes rook d7 check and then whatever king to f8 and then you're just gonna capture on g6 and there's no playing this. You're either getting checkmated or you're going to suffer severe material loss. Let's say if rook captures on a2, uh, rook to f7 will be checkmate. But any other move will also be winning for Hikaru. And that's why Magnus resigned after rook to d1. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, I can't uh, even uh, begin to point out uh, how incredible this match was. And uh, okay, this is only one game. Uh, but if you have three hours, watch the full three hours. It will be a time very well spent. So yeah, these are the uh, the results of all the formats of 5 plus 1, 3 plus 1, and 1 plus 1. So Hikaru uh, uh, got so far ahead in the 5 plus 1 section that Magnus just couldn't... Uh, uh, could, couldn't bounce back even though he won the three plus one and the one plus one section but Hikaru defends his title uh, and he defends it against none other than world champion Magnus Carlsen so Hikaru is the the, the speed chess champion uh, so yeah uh, there we have it hope you guys enjoyed it like I said sorry about no videos for the past few days but uh, my my voice just didn't work and I thought I'd, I'd just give it a rest for a few days and then you know just um, uh, c continue probably during the world rapid and blitz championship uh, but but yeah, some of you were worrying about my health if uh, I'm still around. So yes, I am and <laughs> I will be covering it. Uh, so uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I would like to thank Samuel Kane, Sam Kotsolov, Bradley Campbell, uh, Konstantinos Lampridis and Jeffrey Clayman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the uh, World Rapid and Blitz and checking up on your wonderful suggestion. Do use hashtag suggestion so I can spot your suggestions a bit easier. Uh, so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all and I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.